okay, I'm going to go ahead and post this video. It's very long, mostly boring. Um, there's going to be some people interested, and we will probably use this to try to rewrite some of the installation guide stuff because it's out of date. So I thought I'd put in an intro and warning you about that, but also a little bit of news about what's going on with the GBA Consoleizer. Um, we were like really close to getting ready to ship kits, the first uh, 100 lottery winners. Um, we have the LCD plastics, and most of the people that wanted a full case have let me know what color they want. I think there's only eight people left that haven't contacted me on which color they want, or if they're waiting for another color, or what's going on. So, if I don't hear from those people soon, they're just going to get an LCD kit, and they can buy a full case later if that's what they wanted. So, I took these kits to the Cincy Classic Show, and Corey of Live My Life and Gaming was there. So I gave the LCD version kit to him to take home, and he said it's okay if I stream with this Sunday night, which would have been uh, two nights ago. This is Tuesday. And I said, sure, and apparently Woozle was watching the stream and noticed a bug. So uh, we're in the process of getting the first kits reprogrammed for, before we ship them out. Not a big deal. But it will put it back a little bit. I think I was... Up until like just a few days ago, I was waiting on my Kynar wire to show up, which it's here, so the kits will ship with wire. And I want to say maybe there was like one or two nuts or bolts we were waiting on, and I think those are here too. So I think we're ready to ship, other than now we have to update the firmware again. So I, I, would, th I would say within the next couple weeks, most of those will be getting shipped out. And I would say I will also be shipping review units out to the big YouTubers and such in that same time frame. Like I've said, um, best place to look for news on this kit is on my Twitter feed. Uh, I try to repost the, the tweet onto uh, the website's main page blog area, which is just under the flash part. There's um, still a bunch of stuff happening with Consolizer as far as the full case colors um, creative makers our main suppliers has uh, like 60 plus colors come in and that's not the end of it he's got um, uh, plastics that are filled with glitter metal and wood on top of everything else and it's just like this just complicates it even more and then just not too long after that Greg posted a picture of he's got a 3d printer that can do two colors and I asked uh, the creative makers about it, and he's and John said, "Yeah, we've got one that's doing five, and it will be running in about a month and a half." And I was like, "Oh my God!" So, a bunch of stuff going on there. Um, oh yeah, and also we ha I think we have possibly nine different colors of the plexiglass piece that goes on top. So there's there's four pieces to the full case. In the, pla in the 3D printed plastic, and then there's also the plexiglass. So I did a, a rough estimate, and I'm not even sure I had the right numbers to plug in for the permutations of the different colors that you could do if I eventually make it to where you can order a different color for each of the four pieces and the plexiglass, which I could do. There was something like 2.4 something to like 10 to the 46th different different common different permutations for that and I was like wow that's just insane to think about so yeah there's plenty plenty still to do plenty going on um, pre-orders are up you can go pre-order kit now um, I just have the first whatever it is maybe uh, eight or ten different uh, colors to choose from including the original LCD um, the LCD is just the plastics that fit in place of the LCD on the Game Boy and we will have color color options for those as well. Um, uh, Creative Makers did order a second color sample kit so that you could print not only all the full case pieces but also all the LCD pieces. And I'm waiting to put all of the options onto my site until I have them here to take final pictures of with you know like the GBA motherboard and everything set into it with Plexi on top, just so you have a better idea of what you're ordering. And um, I think um, it's possibly at the end of this week I'm going to start getting a bunch more of those colors. And as soon as I do, get the pictures and put them up on the website. I will tweet it and, and all that stuff, and you'll be able to pre-order all kinds of different colors. So, 
Hope you enjoyed the video, but like I said, big warning, long and boring, but plenty to learn. Hope you enjoyed. Okay, one of the very first things that you want to do before even ordering a kit is to figure out if you need a 40 pin or 32 pin version of the kit. 40 pin is standard and you have to buy an adapter PCB for 32 pin. And one of the ways I can see on the, the clear, or I should say translucent, Game Boys, is you can clearly see the ribbon cable right there. And if you look kind of from this side, there's two nubs. You can see them from the top pretty well too. There's two nubs there. If your cable is wider than those two nubs, you've got a 40 pinner. I think I've got all 40 pins in front of me. And I've got a picture showing a 32 pin. And it's like almost just as wide as those nubs, a 32 pin. But it's not wider. And, and you can see this one's clearly, I don't know, I'd say there's at least three, four signal traces on each side of those nubs. So if you got a 32, get the 32 pin adapter. Alright, so taking apart the Game Boy Advance. Pretty easy stuff. You know, 1x50 tri-wing. And this is a double aught screwdriver. There's one Phillips screw right there. So double aught fits it perfect. I'm not even sure if I still have a single aught. That's a triple, that's too small. Seems like I broke it and I never replaced it. And you got six tri wing screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, screws out. Back slides off, real easy. Now we have three more Phillips here, here, and here. And then we will get the LCD ribbon cable disconnected. And there's just these two brown nubs right here that you push forward and out. the ribbon cable will pry out. Meanwhile all your buttons will probably start flying off. You separate those and put them to the side. And your rubbers will probably stick to your motherboard. And the motherboard is free. Now would be a good time to go ahead and do your four electrolytic caps if you're going to do that. I actually don't have any extra cap kits on hand so I need to wait and do that. This is a, a demo unit anyway. Anything that I sell will have four new caps put in. And now you can take your rubber pieces and your buttons and d-pad and soak them in something and wash them along with all your other pieces. You can wash your screws if you want to. I used to and I kind of quit doing it. Now, the LCD. The last time I did this, I actually took my plastic spudger and went in right underneath the ribbon cable and got a hold of the LCD and started prying up. And then this one came, to get, came apart way easier than the last one that I did. So don't be surprised if you have to put a fair amount of force on that. And then you're going to pop out the front screen too. Start at a corner and just work it around. Now any glue left, you may or may not want to take off. Um, I believe it will be fairly well hidden by the, by the plastics. Yeah. So it's not super necessary to eat that glue off. Um, I do use Goo Gone occasionally for that kind of stuff. But like you can see there's dirt buildup in these slots for the speaker. And you'll see it in the 
slots for the buttons and d-pad and select start too so get a toothbrush and yeah the recess for the Nintendo logo will all be dirty so you can put that in the wash as well um, all of the problems that I've had so far with GBAs that I've bought have either been the power switch and also the volume potentiometer and Woozle says for the volume you can just crank it all the way up and just leave it there and let's see that would be this way so cranking it if you're looking at it cranking it clockwise is probably all the way up which may or, not, may or may not produce sound and you could actually just clip the speaker completely off and that way audio output out of the headphone jack is at full blast and you can just turn it down with your TV if you want to use analog audio in some cases that may be necessary as um, just, just the way this kit works it was impossible to get HDMI to be perfect with audio that's why they ship in DVI mode just in case your TV is incompatible with HDMI signal so there's options with the speaker there now the power switch I'm pretty sure I pulled this from my pile of GBAs that had bad power switches possibly bad volume switches I'm not really worried about volume right away until I test it on the TV I just need to know if my TV will work with the the audio over HDMI but in if it does, I won't worry about the analog audio at all. And uh, obviously, if it doesn't work with it, then I'll plug in a headphone jack and send analog audio to the TV. And, well, I'm not sure if that'll work on my TV, honestly. Because I think in HDMI mode, it does not, probably doesn't, probably wouldn't be able to hear the analog audio. Because it doesn't have a DVI connector, is what I'm trying to say. So, on the power switch, the one thing that I was doing, this way is on. One thing I was doing was clipping the casing on it and just taking the actuator completely out of it. I'll get a close-up shot, but you can tell, maybe even from, from there, that the inside of this is disgusting and then the actuator is nothing more than a couple of contacts that slide from this side to that side and when it's all the way over on the on position you're you're basically shorting the very left pin all the way over there to one of the two middle pins which are actually one big contact in the middle even just running my screwdriver over that shine that up quite a bit and it might still work and it might work now that I've done that but I pulled the pad off so I'm not worried about the power switches at all if you want to go further in removing it fine but I just don't see the effort see the reason for effort um, what I'm what I'm gonna do is just bridge those pins on the outside permanently and one of the first steps I'm also going to do is to remove the battery contacts we do not want batteries getting put back into this so it's just best just to remove the battery contacts in fact if you don't want to desolder them just cut them off it looks like the positive one is just you know I don't think either of them are that big of a deal to cut off now the, there is one reason to save them is because you might be able to sell these uh, I've been into plenty of GBAs already where where these things were just corroded to death. So maybe you would want to desire those and keep those and possibly resell them for a little bit of money back. But there is huge blobs of solder here and you don't really need to do like a, a desolder gun to get them off like so. You don't really need to do that. All you really need to do is just get your soldering on there and melt the solder and just pull it out looks like there's just two clips on each side of it that, about like a U-shape to go down in there and just melt the solder and pull it out 
So I have this um, drawer full of component legs. This is like resistors, capacitors, through hole stuff that I cut the legs off and saved them. And this is exactly why I do that. And every modder should have just such a thing. See, now I can place that leg down in there and solder it to those two pins. And that way this GBA is always on. That way I have to, then uh, that way I only have to rely on this switch on the kit itself because this switch does need to be on in order for the whole thing to work. So I'm going to do that. So my tip of choice for this installation is going to be a very thin conical tip. So once we start getting into soldering to these little pads out here, it's going to be need to be pretty small. This is a JVC. Uh, it's a 930. All right, so to solder those old crusty pads, I'm going to put some flux on it. This is just MG Chemicals, no clean flux. Voltar approved. And you can hit it with some heat to clean them a little bit. Always get asked about solder. Um, I definitely use rosin core flux in the beginning when I was a beginner, but uh, I have since found, I believe it's Kester has a no clean. Core solder. And I'm sure it's 6337. The label is gone, otherwise I could tell you more details like I want to say like pound 66 might be the type of um, core, what type of um, flux the core is. And I want to say there's another number, no it was 245 was the, the type of flux and I want to say like the pound 66 was like the percentage of core versus alloy. Like you, I'm, I'm sure this is like 031 um, diameter, which is about what I've been using for a long time. And um, like you can uh, get with different amounts of flux inside of it, which I didn't know that for a long time. Some kind of uh, percentage difference type thing. Put a little bit in that, that way I don't have to hold it flat. Perfect. Cut off the excess. Now it is permanently on. I want to figure out the same way to do the volume, like which pads over here do I need to short to make it permanently loud. I don't want to do it to this motherboard because probably other than the power switch and maybe a crappy volume knob, it works. I'll, uh, I'll find one that doesn't work. As a matter of fact, right here, I've got one that I will definitely experiment on. Look at that crap. Somebody left batteries in that thing for years and years and years. And all that toxic, toxic fumes from the batteries just went and corroded almost every single surface. So, like the main chips are still okay, but anything that was exposed Enig is just hammered. That'd be a good way to. That'd be a good volume knob to. You can't even move that thing. That'd be a good knob to like kind of tear into and just tone it out. Let's see what happens at full volume. I just about guarantee you that one has a bad had a bad power switch or this one. I'm sure this one didn't boot at all, but that is just awful. This is the one that came out of the shell that I cracked. So the shell looked beautiful but the motherboard was Gandhi. Then I guess if you are a bit of a beginner you should probably double check your work. So set your meter to tone. Continuity. 
and see if you get continuity from the, the inside pad to the left pad. And you can see right here it says on and off. So you know it's this side that needs to be on. Okay, so one of the steps is to remove the original oscillator. Now I've got my meter set to tone. And I can tell you that all the pads on each side are connected. So any heat you apply to one of the pads should translate to all three pads and you might be able to wiggle this thing off without really cutting it or using hot air. So I want to put my 765 blade tip back on here. One of my more favorite tips. The 765 is like the 939, it just has less area um, that solder sticks to. Let's see, probably put some needle nose on it. Got to lift some, so not sure if I damaged any pads yet, but I'm going to go to back to the top side. The top side is the one we're really worried about because that's what we're going to be soldering to. Almost perfect. Okay, so this particular oscillator has legs on the bottom. I'm not sure there was a uh, the guy that Woozle posted originally. The oscillator was black, and I'm, I don't actually know what the bottom of that looked like. It might not be, I mean, look, this look is like a through-hole type oscillator that they just turned into a surface mount. But if you see one like this, you're really going to focus on these top pads, these on pads on the very end, and any, yeah, any heat applied to the outer pads is going to take forever to get to that that big middle outside pad because there's just a what they call a thermal relief just barely any connection but between the two pads right there so that was easy I wonder if I can find one that's got the silver one and it's got the silver one if I find one with a black one that one's already done if I'm on with a black one, I'll, I'll add some video in here to show what the difference is. Hopefully there's no difference, but that really wasn't too bad, honestly. But this is one of the pads that we're going to be soldering to on this side. And I think, you know, once you've done all of this and done your caps, you actually should be ready to start wiring it up. Alright, so I'm kind of seeing where clearances are. I was hoping to put little breakout PCB pretty much flat on that on the CPU but that doesn't work kind of need the connector to face that way and we kind of need it to be off the CPU Or, I guess we could be all the way over here. And yeah, there's plenty of room over that way. Now it's going to be upside down. Huh. Can we just... Uh, kind of attach it to U2? might work right there 
So maybe some double-sided tape or maybe a foam piece on the actual green part. We don't want it on the chip itself. It kind of looks doable. And I do have double-sided sticky tape on hand. Is any good modder should. Looks like I get a good, fairly good sized piece in here. And we're going to be soldering to C2, which is right there. And it looks like my tape is just a little bit thicker. Let me try to orient this right. So, yeah. You want the connector facing that hole. Now I'd say we're touching, which is not the end of the world but we're not rocking on it either like the whole motherboard is not sitting here doing this because it's sitting on top of that against that so that looks like pretty good placement maybe not ideal but that's why I'm doing these uh, this is actually my first install too and Woozle says to some flux on these three pins. Let's see if I can zoom in. Eh, might have to uh, break out a macro lens. I can kind of figure that one out. There's three pads right there TP0, Maybe this one, TP1, that one, and then TPB, or no, TP8 right here. So right button, A button, and B button. Uh, if you're doing a full case install you can actually tone this out and come down. You can even just follow the trace probably and see which pads you can just solder to these huge pads right here. Looks like a very far right one possibly for A and B buttons. Matter of fact I'll just check that real quick. So TP0, yeah, the very far right pad on both A and B can be soldered to for full case. You can do it in the LCD version too, you just won't be able to use the buttons. And let's see, I don't believe there's any Oh, well, I guess you actually could, since this uh, the star button V is tiny. A lot of these are very tiny, but it looks like you could probably just come around the top of the motherboard. Yeah. You can hit the outside pin right here. And that will be the same as hitting that tiny little via. So, and then also C2, that's the only ones on the right side of this board. Is that C2 one? Which is the fourth one because you got S1, C1, S2, C2. The fourth one in from the right. And I've kind of got it covered with my board. That sticky tape's somewhat forgiving. I probably actually could move. board to uncover it. I recheck that. Just to make sure my my breakout board's not hitting this lip, which it very well might. Oh yeah. Huh. Big time. So that's something to look out for. Or just cut it off. Depending on how originally you want to keep your 
or GBA. And I could also just move it that way. That's probably a little bit easier. It's way too big a piece of double sided tape. So keep it um, even with the top of that. I believe it's a RAM chip. U2. And then keep it over that way far enough to leave C2 uncovered. And then you can just lay your blank PCB right there. Lay your motherboard back in and just double check it. And we're good. And I want to say that rib is right there. Just goes right there across the back of that connector and on top of that RAM chip. So, where was I? Yeah. You can put some flux on those pads and put some solder on them, kind of uh, pre tin them. You'll probably get away with a thick tip here. It was really when I was trying to solder the vias that I was worried that I was going to need something conical. Originally, we were going to send a ribbon cable along with the kit. I believe this is 19 conductors. Is that what you need? I can't remember now. So you might need 19 wires, but I've got Kynar wire on order, which is a solid core wire, which is a little easier to do small stuff with solid core. And since you're just going to this board with these wires, you know, once it's installed, they're not going to move. So solid will will last just fine. You want you want the uh, multi-strand if it, there's any kind of movement, but there's not. I, I was um, wanted to try to make this as tight as possible just to see how little wire we could get away with using uh, but also just to give some idea of how much to send to the Kynar like I, I'm sure I think this is like six or nine inches or eight or nine inches and I believe that was way way too much but I'm going to Zoom out a little bit here and solder these in. And Woozle did post a few pictures on routing the wire and such. But basically you just want to avoid those pads. I don't think we get anywhere near the start select pads, but there's at least one wire that comes all the way out here, so you want to snake that through or maybe even up and around this whole pad because you know this is basically what's going to be covering it and we're looking for I believe it is TP5 which is one of the outmost pads right there and there's probably no other place to catch that either I might have a poke around I always like trying to get the easiest solder spot that I can. So like we're doing the battery terminals, C2, if we go back to the other switch on the on the switches go back to the other side for those pins and then the one for the oscillator those are stupidly easy but the rest of them are these really tiny little basically test points. I mean it's even labeled TP which means test point not as easy to get a hold of. Well, I just toned it out and I believe it's TP9 that we're going for for left switch is on the inside. So it's the same pin it just happens to be that pin on, on the right. It's not the outside pins. Alright, so I'm going to start with the battery. Go ahead and make positive red. And we're just going to come right there, so only need a few inches there. 
And these are the strippers that I use. KYP. Not seeing a model number. I'm sure if you uh, Google or search KYP wire strippers, you'll f probably find them. I like them a lot. Um, there's plenty of other wire strippers that I like just fine, but this one's fully metal and it just won't break. <laughs> That's a big thing. There's another tool I use a lot, just um, alligator clip on a heavy metal base. Could have went a little shorter. That's all right. And we got at least take two out to the TP one and zero. Need to strip just a small nub. Don't need to be that long. Up a little bit more. The silk screen is a little bit hard to read. So from the very bottom looks like TP0 and then TP8 and then TP1, SO1, SO2, and C2, which C2 is the one we were talking about down here. Give it a little bend before I solder it down. 
Well, this is just my take on it. You don't have to do it exactly how I'm doing. You just got to make sure, give them a little wiggle, make sure they're not coming off. And then Woozle has like um, a diagram of, of red circles of places to avoid, like obviously the pads. And then that hole right there, you need to avoid that one. And you can see what heat does to typical ribbon cable. See, now I'm covering. I'm covering the TP8, but I'm taking TP8 to the other side anyway. it was the right one. Now you can even take it from the top through there. You don't even have to go to the outside of the motherboard. You can just go through that hole from the top right to the hole. So I'm just going to hold it in place, give an idea how long it has to be, cut it to length. You see me drop flux on the ends, but you don't have to on flux core solder. I just kind of got in the habit of doing it. I'll do the hard side first. I say hard, but that's not very hard. Soldering to a big through hole pins, pretty easy. That's why I like that. There you go. Nice and clean. You know, what I keep worrying about was all these ribs and everything about how how that ribbon cable is going to fare. Yeah, it definitely sits on top of it. Like right on top of it. There's a nice little opening right there. If I'd have known that, I probably would have shot for that first. But the easiest thing to do is just notch it out. And if you're wondering about my cutters, these are x -Lite 170Ds flush cutters. They're very, very sharp. They are perfect for this kind of mod work. There you go. Now, I'd say we probably still need to do that even if we're using Oh, hmm, I didn't notice that. So that hole has a piece of plastic that goes through it. Okay, well, let's see. I'm betting this wire is too short to go around the outside, but maybe not. Could be off my notch now though. Nope, still good there too. Oh. <laughs> that looks like another area to avoid. Remember we're trying to avoid 
avoid that hole. There's also the LEDs right there for power. So the LED light pipe sits right above that hole. So that makes me want to go ahead and try a longer wire so I can kind of go around all that stuff. So I'm going to hit that pin. I don't want to go like that. Looks like there's more ribs to avoid though. If I just come all the way around the back side of that switch, make it about that long. Yeah, I think that will clear everything, I hope. Maybe not. Look at that. Being a little bit painful. This is going to be why I'm going to start really loving the full case install. Because I don't even see what it's having trouble with now. Oh, maybe I do. Right there. That's just that uh, jacketing melted off and got down in that hole. So. I don't know that Woozle highlighted that hole. No, he didn't. So you need to stay away from that one too, because that nub goes all the way through it. Yeah, it looks like I still kind of need to avoid some plastic right there or cut off just a chunk of it. It's starting to seem like a lot of work to avoid soldering down to a little test point. I don't know if that was necessary or not because actually that part does not come all the way down to the motherboard. Now that I'm looking at the posts, you can see it doesn't touch the motherboard. Well, anyway, that side's done, which was supposed to be the easy side. <laughs> uh, no, I guess it's, we're not done. We've got to do C2 yet, which I guess I'll use that super short piece.
and it's literally going right there. That's one of the problems with um, trying to strip wires that are super short is it'll likely just pull the entire wire through the jacket. So on the short stuff, I usually just break out an X-Acto knife and just roll it. Try to pull it off the arena. And you could also try to just um, melt it back. That would probably work too. This is why you need that alligator clip thing. Hold the wire while you solder stuff. That was easy. Okay. Not too short on that one. And by the way, we've actually changed this entire board and it's got different pads than what's in the guide at the moment but that would be updated soon so I'm thinking there's actually some pads that we don't we don't solder up just yet <clears throat> so for the clock which is the lower left if you're if you're looking at the breakout board the solder mask is laid out exactly so that it's oriented like that so clock is on the lower right. Did I say lower left? Might as well go ahead and pretend a bunch of these pads. We we're kind of looking into getting the PCB fab to pretend these more. They're hazel finish. So there's already solder alloy on there, but it's always nice to have a big blob to solder to. And they do actually um, solder in that FFC connector. So we can go for any of the three pads. So I don't need it that long. I should be trying to measure these pieces as I go and try to keep track. Maybe write them down. So there was say at least five inches in those wires and we're up to six and a half for this one.
is right there. So it needs to be that long. And uh, that's two and a half, so we're up to eight. Yes, this this little jar is the satellite holder for flux because the jar that I bought was enormous. And I usually have something to hold this into because it just goes everywhere, but kind of in a rush. Trying to get these done for the Cincy Classic show. Let's see where we down to. About seven more. TP seven three four six and reset. TP two and TP five. Let's see. P2, seven, P5 which uh, Woozle has a pretty great diagram of all of the pads and everything too TP9 TP5 TP6 is right there too That's the one I was looking for. TB4, TB3, TB2, TB7. Yeah, that's all of those. According to his diagram, really, it's a uh, TP5 and a little bit of TP7 and just needs to come out. I'm guessing probably need to avoid these holes too. Yeah, looks like almost all three of them have nubs that come through. Let's see. We want to do the inside pads first. TP5. Start a long piece on that one. And he actually goes down through the middle of the pad like that. I'm just not convinced that's a good way to do it. 
I just I don't want to be in the middle there because you got your your nub for the directional pad. And just in case you were going to use the, con the controls of the GBA. Oh, gosh, I want to say. I might even go back under the board. And back over that way. Kind of like so. about three and three quarters so we'll just round it up to four and say now we're up to one foot One thing I don't like about these pads being on top of each other like this is it may not be a much of a deal with Kynar wire but with ribbon cable if that melts back and gets pushed down the ones we solder into these places could actually end up touching, shorting something you want to avoid obviously so let's do a little bit of a sanity check here let's see where I'm at definitely need to Put in a big notch right there. Luckily you don't see it too hard on the outside. You could make it a, a lot more shallow than I'm making it too. Oh yeah. looking real good. And I'll double check. Yep, nothing hitting the wire on that side either. I'm looking at the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. Nothing going to crush that wire over there. Good. And that's definitely my preferred method that one. Matter of fact, if you want to get real fancy, you could weave that wire under that one and really hold it in place good. Or maybe not hold it in place, but hold it out of the way. You can almost even go under that one really weave them in. But I like that. I like I like keeping it out out from underneath this as much as possible. Oh crap. Look at that. I did miss something. That's gonna be the peg. Well it didn't look like it was hitting it, did it? So the peg comes right through that notch and crushes our wire. I 
more importantly, that will be in the way of the silicone. Still feels good, and kind of looks like might be a little bit of that right there touching just a little. I don't know if it's really crushing though. Nah, it's not crushing. But it is definitely right on that hole. Yeah, I think it's fine. Like I said, it's not like you're going to be assembling and disassembling this all the time. You know, at least coming out of it, just straight out and around all of it. Give yourself a little extra slack. You can pull that wire out of that little notch. It's about as good as you can hope for, I think. Let's see. Now I want to try to go for these inside pads. So reset TP4 and TP7 are the three inside pads. So let's go for reset. inches so once that put me up to 14 if you take away the slack from the last one we'll add we'll add plenty of slack at the at the, uh, the end just to be sure so if that puts me right at 14 keeping it nice and tight see it but I'm trying to keep it to where my jacketing is well past those outside pads I'm backwards <laughs> I'm trying to do these inside pads first no we want to do the outside pads first but it looks like there's enough room if you got you got wiggle room it's probably not gonna hurt anything but I can tell you right now I probably already have to make a new notch just for that wire oh no it's inside the rib <laughs> so that one and 
TP6 and TP4 are both inside of that rib as well as TP3 looks like TP2 is smack dab on that rib like just like right there Full case just keeps winning my favor. Okay, that was TP6. Right there. Yeah, another thing great about the full case is this is the side you see. <laughs> you won't even see all this stuff. All this wiring mess will just be hidden. And the next outside one, TP3 and then TP2. So right there's TP3. I didn't even get a full millimeter, yeah, one full millimeter of strippage on that piece. But like I said, the heat, the heat of the iron will melt back ribbon cable jacket. Try to avoid little spiky points on your solder. Best way to do that is add some flux. Just re-hit it with, with the tip and it'll just smooth right out. Okay, TP2 is that one that was right on the rib. Fancy with and come up here. Ah, crap! I lost track of which one I've measured and not measured. That last one was two inches, and I measured the one before it. It was also two. I think we're at sixteen. And this will put us about 18 and a half. Unless I missed one, which I will pick up on in the video, hopefully. I knew that ruler was sitting there for a reason. I'm about to move it out of the way.
Okay, on the inside three, I've still got TP4 and 7 left. Which TP7 was here and 4 is here. I think 4 was. out of the way of the rib. Okay, there's another two and a half, so what are we back up to 20.5 inches? As easy as this is going with the ribbon cable. I can't imagine how much easier it's going to be with the actual Kynar, which I have never used, if I'm being honest. I've got magnet wire. That stuff's a little bit hard to work with. But it can account for an extremely clean install. Yeah, I've got a bit of a nub on it and I don't like it. Now it looks perfect. Okay, man, I think we're at the last one as long as there's nothing that goes to one and two, and I just, it's, I don't think it's even uh, listed on the old installation pages. So this is another two and three quarter. So twenty one and three quarters. So let's just say if you can't do it with twenty four inches like this, there's something wrong with you. Because <laughs> two inches is, is a lot. Or three quarters of an inch. Is it three quarters of an inch? Maybe we should do 25 inches. We should give at least inch, inch and a half extra wire here. And maybe more in case um, of screw ups. Maybe we should just go 30 inches. The stuff is cheap. I, at least I got it pretty cheap. Since that's under the pad, let me give that an extra shot. Flux and heat. point what you want to do test it and you're really down to inserting the ribbon cables plugging it in okay so this is a bit of a trick but the blue tab on the 
40 pin faces down. And on the smaller one, it faces up. Not too worried about routing the FFCs. Mostly I just want to make sure it works. So we need a cartridge. I guess I didn't have to have it in the LCD plastics, but whatever. Okay, so the only GBA game I have is Jimmy Neutron. And just cheap, happy USB phone charger. right now the cart connector is dirty seven twenty P that or I've screwed something up. No, I'll clean the cart a thousand times, but I'll do it again. It's also possible this motherboard didn't work as I thought, work as good as I thought it should. Here's for the proof. There's the game. If I don't insert it and turn it on, I get the same screen. And I've tried a different uh, USB power cord too, and that's not it either. Yeah, we really need to redo these guides. Reset does not get soldered. So we can take off couple inches off the total. Let's give it another try. Okay, one more time. Nope. Alright, so I did miss a couple. Uh, S1 and S2. Little pads right here. Mm 
but they are not in the old guide. So, I don't take full blame for that one. So it looks like we will be adding those two inches back in from the reset wire. See the innermost one is S2. Okay, now yeah, let's see if it works. Hmm. Let's do a sanity check and just try a different game. The only reason I was using Jimmy Neutron is because it boots up and has sound right away. Which makes it easy to test on. Yeah. It's not going to be the game. And since I'm getting video output, I believe it's the motherboard. Crap. Oh, by the way, I ripped off the speaker. I don't foresee this going to anybody that cares to hear it through the actual, uh, if we leave it as an LCD version, uh, and definitely not if we leave it full case. I don't see anybody really wanting this in the full case at all, and very little even in the LCD version. So we're wired up to a new motherboard. All I had to do was wire up the new breakout board. Uh, this one had an old prototype on it. So I'll turn this on. And in the beginning you will not hear any audio because it ships in um, DVI mode. This controller just sucks. So,
DVI mode off. Okay, so maybe I'd already turn this one on. There we go. So turning DVI mode on made the audio work. <laughs> audio low pass filter. I can hear a difference on this crappy TV. So we got, um, this is the ID of the actual kit, and that's your firmware version. I don't really need to listen to it. A, B button swap. There's your color wizard. different filters. Zoom options. It's like four or five at four point five X looks good on this TV. Probably leave all the rest of this stuff off. Since I'll be demoing it at Cincy Classic, I'll probably, uh, and this stuff doesn't matter. Palettes is for the Game Boy games. Yeah, that's cool. I like how I made it uh, grid one and then, uh, oops, and an obvious scan lines before the number that's very obvious now, so I like it, yeah. Save. Now there. Was there a button combo for reset? I can't remember if we had that or not. bit of a delay so you can't see the whole intro. Yeah. I assume that's supposed to be the Nickelodeon logo, because that's what the I think what's what the cartridge has on it. Yeah. Oops. I messed it up a little bit, didn't I? We shouldn't be trying to move around too much. And that could have just been moving the cart around. Caused it. Oh, I'm losing power. Boot. It's possible I shorted something out. Hope not. Okay, so I got power and HDMI plugged in, and I got a green LED, so I know it's not the main board. If I plug in the 
thinner FFC breakout PCB still green lit stays on but I don't have a and you know what I'm backwards on the main one plug in the LCD cable and power goes out that is really weird So I think what happened was is I hadn't done the power switch bypass or whatever on it and I think I had hit the switch and turned it to off because when I looked at it it was off. I'm hoping that's what happened. So I'll get my uh, cables plugged back in here and I hope it works. Because the kit still turns on full green light and thin ribbon cable, full green light. Okay, here we go. Full green light, nice. Something really simple. I was really scared I hit something down here and shorted it out. So, definitely test it before you put it all the way back into your enclosure because taking it back apart is not going to be super hard. You know, it's not as difficult as taking apart like a full front loader Nintendo or something. Well, maybe it is still screwed up. Damn it. Video cable is an upside down as it should be. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Gotta have a game in it. That's one thing about modding is you will drive yourself nuts if you don't constantly do sanity checks. You've got, you've got to make sure that it works before you put it in your enclosure or you will drive yourself nuts taking stuff back apart. So now let's put it in the enclosure and do a final test on it. Okay, so this is a different GBA board. Um, this one had a prototype on an early prototype and the breakout PCB was a bit different. Like it didn't even have S1, S2 wires on it. And Weasel says to re leave reset blank. And one and two pads are just extras. We don't need them yet. It was uh, maybe some kind of future proofing or something. And here's the one that I did. And I must have just not. I must have picked up one that didn't work. I got the power mod, power mod on this one. I might test it again later just to see. And after redoing this one, I had to put some longer. I believe this is Kynar. 
and I found some in my scraps. The Kynar is honestly only slightly easier to work with. Like you can't pin the very tips of the wire as well as you can the stranded. So you don't have this big glob of solder to easily um, basically weld it to the test point solder blob. But not that big of a deal and the biggest benefit is like let's see that wire, that wire right there goes right through that hole that I said was kind of in the way when um, like when that that chunk of plastic comes through it. I guarantee you now it won't even hardly register. Well, I hit that one smack on. <laughs> so yeah, make sure make sure your wires are out of the way of plastic. doesn't hardly even register. Matter of fact, I think it'd have more room if the wire was up closer to the switch. Like that. I don't have all the cutouts made on this one, which might be why it's not coming down on hard. Not as hard, but it's hitting over here, so I really don't even see. I don't think that plastic comes all the way through, and it's barely even touching the wire at all right there. This was so that's the major benefit of this wire. And you're not going to notice it as much under the pads, or at least not under the D pad anyway. But I got a bit of a mess right there that will need the cutout. I'm not using this one. I've already. I've already got the one that I put all the notches in. It's uh, soaking right now to be cleaned. But I'm, yeah, I'm glad it, uh, glad it's finally working. So we feed our FFCs down the holes, and I'm upside down and backwards. Okay, it's a bit of a pause point, and we'll be back with the cleaned plastics. Well, initially the easiest part is going to be setting this. And I did find, I believe it was another glacier one, where the LCD plastics did were just too snug to fit down in that little recess. I kind of had to shove it down in there. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to have enough threads poking through to grab onto this. So yeah, that thing is upside down. I don't know why I didn't notice that. That's irritating. Yeah, see how there's, I mean, it's just flush right here. Could be a 3D printing issue. But, you know, I mean, you need a thread or two there to start your nut. So, I think we're looking into that. I mean this is uh, the tops are really made for a different kind of bolt not the uh, kind of a round head bulb but more of a countersunk maybe. And I don't feel like there's enough sticking through there. Okay, you 
want the threads to come almost to the top of the nylock nut. And, and I don't really want to tighten this anymore, so I'm actually going to swap over to using. I'm going to try these 20 millimeter. bolts from the uh, the full case see how much more thread sticking through right away Because this PCB and then the plastic's hitting on that recess, there's no movement here. There's no need to smash it real hard, in my opinion. This is the uh, T7. Kind of works. It's supposed to be a hex. And a four millimeter socket. See, there's already almost a millimeter sticking through. That could just be the difference of the head of that fitting down in there into the printed plastic further. Uh, what we want to do that just it just simplifies shipping that way I'm not looking for a whole different bolt just for the LCD kits so we was talking about making this piece thicker to accommodate these 20 millimeters and it looks like I'd say for sure you could make it at least one millimeter thicker if not two and, and I think it just comes down to the head of that bolt just being different enough I mean you would think I mean you look at the head of the thing and you think oh that's gonna definitely <laughs> stick out more but for some reason it doesn't okay so the, the OD of the head is smaller that must be why Run it down until it just fills some resistance and stop. So I destroyed that last top shell. Yeah, that ain't going nowhere. Now the other option is to put some rubber feet up here. You could even cover the head of these bolts because they sit almost perfectly flat. It looks like it feels like that one's sticking up. But the other ones don't. So yeah, this is the one that I put together for the initial pictures uh, when the pre-order went live. And apparently I squeezed these bolts too much because it just shattered my clear shell. And my clear shell was in really nice shape. But... Luckily I have plenty more. But man, that sucks. I mean, that, that thing was not yellowed at all. It was an original Nintendo Part 2. I mean, you know, old, so possibly brittle. Maybe the glaciers are more brittle than some. 
I don't really know, but I can tell you, do not over tighten these bolts. Okay, from here there's not much in the current install guys, but I'm hoping to change that. But really, I think we're just going to get all the buttons back in. It's worth mentioning that I cleaned these quite a bit, but if you get one that doesn't work and you know your your um, enig or gold pads over here, are okay, do some scraping on this. I have a um, an exacto knife I used just for this situation. It's got a nice curved blade on it, but I actually dull it on purpose. Like that's not sharp at all, but it is perfect for coming in here and just giving a little scrape to those carbon pads and it is shocking how much better they will work these look really good so they probably don't need it Unfortunately, both my select start pads here pretty poor shape. And look at the one that I pulled out of the uh, the battery corroded one. It actually looks really good on that end. And the carbon pads don't look too bad. And I really won't need them to function, so I'm going to use these just because they look nicer on the outward surface. Okay. So short one's easy enough, but the large one goes in upside down. And it is okay to bend these, but like only one time. perfect and our 20 millimeter 20 millimeter bolts still have loads of room super nice let's see Power button is going to be superficial now, but I definitely want to keep it in there. It's not going to move or do anything. Shoulder buttons. Try to pick the nicer ones here. And we're looking at the back, so left goes on the right side. Trim pieces. Let's see, that's the nicer set.
bear with me. <laughs> Don't work on these a whole lot. I got that power button in completely wrong. Hmm? Just hitting on the PCB. Got up above it, that's what happened. Ugh, that's not hard to do. The ribbon cable keeps wanting to pop up the motherboard, so gotta make sure your power button is below that. Not real sure what to suggest there. <laughs> well, rest it on there, I guess. Nope. Hmm. There we go, that worked. Tricky, tricky. And I can remember seeing there was a couple red circles right here for areas to avoid when routing the wires. I don't think that's necessary. That's not coming anywhere near uh, crushing that wire, the power wires. So... I'm just down to the one Phillips and the tri-wing screws. And I say this in a lot of my videos, so I'll repeat it again. When dealing with a metal screw into plastic, do yourself a favor and turn the screw backwards. I'm not kidding. Until you hear it click or make some kind of movement I get mind that one did it right away. Hear it? That way you know you've got the path set for that screw to go into the original threads into the plastic and you're not making new threads into the plastic which will make it easy to strip. should click in the same spot if you just go around and round. Oh. How'd that happen? Ooh. <laughs> Huge mistake. Man, I got ahead of myself. It just shows you how new I am to the Game Boy Advance console. Another sanity check. So I missed putting in the motherboard screws, which will solve this problem. So there's three screws to put back in. Oh, another helpful tip is you want magnetized screwdrivers, buy yourself one of these. You just do that with it. If you don't want to magnetize, run it through that hole. Super helpful. And I 
if you don't hear a click, just go for it. It's possible it was already stripped out. These motherboard Phillips screws are really hard to hear. A click. I really need to figure out if there is a single lot Phillips. I need to get one because I think that would fit those a lot better. So while you're tightening that down, just make sure that power switch is above the motherboard. I'll have a lot less trouble there. Man, I can't believe I did that. Well, I do believe it. It's been a crazy week. And this really is one of maybe two or three that I've put together. See, this one's not magnetic. But if I run it through there, now all of a sudden it is. Extremely helpful for these tiny ones. Especially for putting it on the end and keeping it, making it stay there. So all six of those are back in, that one's back in, that still fits and clicks in place. Not the perfect combo of colors, but it's perfect for taking to the Sensi Classic to show off. You know what I really need is a flash cart with a uh, button tester program if they exist. I'm sure they do. They exist for almost everything. At least you guys still got access to the volume knob and headphones. I bet those start and select buttons still work too. Well, let's give it a try. Alright. HDMI, power, oops, game, works. Start still works. Up, down works. A works. Uh oh. Left works. Right does not. It works on the kit controller. Yeah. So that's easy enough. I 
assume B works. Some shoulder buttons don't do much. X and Y work as A and B on the Super Nintendo controller. Hmm. Oh, it's a Nintoaster. toaster. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> oh, man. I know, this seems like a kid's game that's a lot of nothing going on. Can we just start past this, maybe? No. Left shoulder button. Right shoulder button makes a noise. Alright, yeah, shoulder buttons are working. Excellent. So, that's all I'm going to do for that one because it's just going to the show for people to use, and I'll have a Super Nintendo controller hooked up to it, so I'm not too worried. about uh, the right button working. It's possible I just need to clean the pad because I had a lot of flux on there. It is no clean, but you still want to clean fuck all that flux off after you've soldered or whatever. Just rubbing alcohol, toothbrush, whatever. So next I'm going to try to do a full case. I don't know if I've got time to do a whole nother one for the show, but I will definitely be doing videos. Um, and probably a more edited and nicer version of what I just did, showing you less mistakes, stuff like that. But people people love to see me screw things up, you know, and I get it. You know, you don't want to just see the good stuff. You want to see the bad stuff, too, because you learn from that, too. Failing is the best way to learn, and believe me, I've learned stuff today. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to try it on this other TV that I borrowed from the wife because I want two consoleizers going and I also want to try it on my big 75 inch TV that I just got let's see I need to go get the remote for it. Hmm. Yeah, it looks way different on on this TV. Let's see. because it's a little bit bigger TV and closer to the camera, you might actually see the difference when I tog through, toggle through the smoothing. There's 5X, full smooth. 2X smoothing. Huh, it doesn't do anything in 5X mode. Interesting.
So apparently in 5x mode there is no smoothing. Hmm. Or four and a half x mode, it's just so it's just four x. Okay. So for this TV, I'm gonna probably yeah, I'm using losing quite a bit of lines there. This one's a little bit, this one's like a way, way newer TV. I can't even remember when I bought that. It had been 2005 to 8, maybe. Have to look it up. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that over the top installation. First installs can be a pain. So do your sanity checks. Make sure. Next step is done. I mean, even just simple stuff like putting the bolts in the motherboard, I just totally forgot about it. Would have saved me all that hassle of figuring out the uh, the power button slider. Yeah. Anyway, I'll get this up sometime next week, so after the convention, and edit it, edit it down a little bit. I'm sure there was tons of footage in here that did not need to be used, including what I'm saying right now. But, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.